So in the hereafter, they will not be in a misery life. They will not get uh, any penalty. They will um, be uh, they will be free from calamity and disasters in this world and hereafter. That is the benefit they are getting if they are if they engage into dawah. And then, moreover, the reason to perform dawah is not to be safe uh, only. First of all, is to see that it's an order from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So you must do it. It's a must. That's what number one. Number two is that you are teaching yourself and you are, and you are teaching yourself the dawah. So when you perform dawah, you are also uh, giving dawah to yourself. So you are happy in yourself and you are straightening your own and uh, so you are straightening your deeds, your works and your uh, actions and verbal words, all of them. So that dawah, that's why it is, should be starting from yourself and then going to the uh, closest and closest like that. We will get into that details later. But first of all, you have to see, you have to consider that this dawah is firm, it's a wajib. It is compulsory, you must do it. And then there are two types of um, the, the form, the wajib falls into two stages. One time is a stage that's called fard kifaya, and the other stage is fard ayn. So when it is fard kifaya, it is when there are a group of Muslims who are all, already uh, doing the dawah, um, outreaching people, and um, fighting people to Islam. So and somebody is taking care of this uh, mission now. From there, it's a general ob obligation. Is that mandate is general in that society. But if you if there is no one, no group, no individuals who have taken this, this responsibility, then every individual should feel that this is their responsibility. So you you would be taking this responsibility because no one else is filling the gap. Then this stage is called for the aid. It is the wajib that is for and uh, about everybody. The second point, uh, why are you conducting this um, outreach of da'wah, is that you are helping other people. And number one, okay, uh, is uh, you are it is, you are fulfilling the order of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. Number two, you are teaching yourself and guiding your own self. Number three, you are helping others. Because you are, you should not worry about having a large Muslim community, or and um, bring many people into Islam. But your main aim is to help those individuals who are at the uh, right path to bring them to the right path, so that you help them, and not only them, you help their children, you help their grand grandchildren. So you help the entire society, this society, and their offsets. You must have that faith, that kind of feeling where you help the whole society. And so you start it from yourself, second your family, your uh, friends, and uh, you cover all your family members and your friends and your co-workers and colleagues. And then and in that system, you use, you use many and method, method, Methodists and many approaches to call the people to Islam. And you use different tools. And uh, for example, you use the media tools and radios, TVs, and programs, Facebook, whatever you like. You can use all that. You can use writing, and both audio and official, you can use all that. And so we will talk about that later on. But inshallah, now I am. I encourage myself and yourself that you have this uh, thinking, this, you must feel this responsibility, which is you spread Islam as much as you can. Because when you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us that we will be the best ummah in the world. We will be the best community in the world as long as we are involved into uh, spreading Islam and as long as we are united. So in 
in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one verse in Surah Al-Imran, Allah says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله Allah says, you are the best community that has been raised for people. You enjoy what is right and you forbid what is wrong. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we have clear picture that we will be the best community in the world and we are have as long as we are doing the da'wah. But before the da'wah, Everybody knows that there is Iman, you should be believing, you should uh, you know what you are preaching, you should know, and uh, you ha should have enough knowledge so that you can uh, convey that message to others. Uh, and you know the manner is the manner of uh, how to convey the message also. Then uh, if the, when you are in that situation, then you are the best as individuals and as community also. But once we neglect that, we are not the best Ummah. We will be the worst Ummah. And because there is condition here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, why are we the best community crazy for people? Because Because we recommend each other to do good deeds. And we um, forbid the bad things. If we see somebody who is behaving unsocially, and then we tell them that what they are doing is not right and we show them how this is bad. So this is the condition to be the da'i. And again, this da'wah is uh, the main purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent many prophets was the issue of da'wah. Just to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people to tell the people that there is only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should worship only him alone. And then he was teaching them how to uh, worship Allah. And that is the beginning we can uh, take one example from uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam how Allah guided him. The first surah or we can say the first ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khala. So Allah here is teaching him. He is teaching him what he should be taught, should be teaching other people. So he's getting message, he's getting training. That means he went to a um, teaching college training. That is, we can say, he went to that training system and he studied. And then the second uh, surah is where in uh, the beginning of the, the first ayah of the second surah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed is when Allah says Ya ayyuhal mudathir qum fa'andir wa rabbaka fa'kathir Allah says Oh you who wrapped up himself arise stand up and deliver warning deliver this warning wa rabbaka fa'kathir and Greaten, honor your Lord with Yaba Kafada here and clean your clothes, clean after yourself. So, in, we will be the best generation, the best community if we are involved into da'wah after we have the knowledge to make the da'wah and we are already practicing Muslims. If we ourselves are the lost, then we cannot bring anybody to the, uh, we cannot even and spread da'wah. And we don't know what to say because we are already at loss. So therefore, to correct ourselves, and then second, to correct others. Then, um, the reason why we are the best is not that we are um, smart, or we are we clean our uh, after ourselves, and we are so nice. It's not all that. It is because we are spreading Islam, and after we learn the Islam. So then, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, very busy in spreading Islam for the entire 23 years uh, that he was, uh, the mission was going on. And Quran was revealing. So then all that, uh, in all that he was very busy, 
to confess the people, to accept the monotheism, to accept the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he was teaching them how to worship Allah, starting from cleanliness. And so then uh, he was telling people to abstain from bad deeds, including uh, all kinds of bad behavior, and take, uh, like uh, being uh, drug addicted, and uh, cheating, robbery, stealing, and uh, assaulting others, and backbiting, uh, all those things, swearing, cursing others, all those things are uh, the Prophet Muhammad was warning from all those bad deeds. And at the same time, guiding people to the right path, to be a decent society, a nice society where there's no problem. It's something that we can call a utopia city. That means very clean city. He was making that. And then he was uh, inviting the people into crowds, a group of people and uh, individuals, uh, all that system. Therefore, it is the responsibility of every individual Muslim to follow that system. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the middle of summarizing da'wah. That's how I can describe. So da'wah, and to go into details, the da'wah can be divided into several categories. And those several categories, let us start the first one is to uh, to uh, gain the education to have the knowledge so first you have the iman the faith and you have the knowledge and then let's come to the and uh, conveying message you are the third part is that you make the tabligh tabligh which is means uh, nowadays we only call a group of muslims who knock the doors and go around that we call them tabligh we just label it them as tabligh. But then the tabligh is one of the methods of the da'wah. That method is can be the first one. The first is that you approach the people, make outreaching, and calling them to Islam. That is called tabligh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يُبَلِّغُونَ رِسَالَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْشَوْنَهُ وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah is talking about the good believers. The good and clean believers are those who, who, those who convey the message. Those who deliver the message to other people and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but do not fear anyone else. Those are called the tabligh, they are doing that message of delivering Islam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in Hadith, "Balighu anni walau ayah." Convey from me, even if it is one ayah. So even if you have the chance to tell one ayah, just convey that ayah. Just to give a picture of Islam. <laughs> it depends on the opportunity you have. It depends on the knowledge you have. It depends on the circumstance. So always you give one is bought, just slowly from time to time. That is the first category. The second category we can say is ta'lim, that you teach others. You only convey the message and you laugh. Then they, everybody will leave it there and nobody will remember it. So what you need is ta'lim, to teach them. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Hadith, بل, uh, the first hadith بلغوا عني ولو آية and as reported uh, by Bukhari it, is, it shows that you go to every single door as much as you can and then convey this message and then the next hadith uh, that I'm mentioning is the hadith when Prophet Wasallam said خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمهم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم the best among you is the one who studied uh, the Quran and taught it. You know the Quran, you learn it, 
and then you teach others. That is the best person. So that's one of the da'wah. This you teach those who are already Muslims, and you teach those who are new converters, converters to Islam, and you just spread the teaching. That's the education sector. The and third category is that is what can be called an nasiha. As Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in Mutafa Hadith, Hadith that is reported by both Bukhari and Muslim, uh, he says, "Verily, Deen is all about good advice." So the Deen is that you exchange the good advice. You tell the, your friend, your brother, you give them good advice, they give you good advice. So that is the best thing. And to continue the da'wah. <coughs> the fourth category is al wasiyah which is recommending one another the truth. You continuously remind your friend and others to do good deeds, to be straight on the Quran.